In this podcast snippet, we're talking about the price of used video games and whether or not there might be some sort of scam tactics going on. Surely not. I hope you enjoy the video. So this is the retro games pricing scam. Now let me let me kick this off by saying that last year, a copy of Super Mario Brothers in its box, still sealed, sold at auction for two million dollars yes you heard that correct two million dollars for a copy of super mario brothers and the problem that this has in the industry is it's got a knock-on effect you've got a knock-on effect for all used video games and old consoles they're all shooting up in value and if you're into retro video gaming and you want one of those things then that's a problem yeah. if like me you had some of those things and you sold them in the last couple of years then that's it's also, also a problem, a problem. <laughs> <laughs> So why did it fetch so much then? Okay, well it was a it was a pristine boxed cellophane wrapped example. Never seen the light of day since it was made. Yeah, and you know never underestimate the price that people will put on nostalgia. Uh, of course, you can't open it or play it ever, ever because no. you're, well you could. It won't be but worth anything. But it would no. defeat the object. Uh, the other reason why it fetched that much is because it had a rating of nine point eight from an organization called WATA, W-A-T-A. They are a grading standards company. So just to explain what that is, and this is by no means uh, exclusive to the the game industry, you have grading Mm. companies for all sorts of things, but basically what you do is you send in your game and it's cellophane wrapper and all that kind of stuff. You pay WATA a fee, uh, and then WATA will use one of their experts to assess the quality of that item, including the quality of the wrap, whether it's got any imperfections marks little you know dings and holes in the cellophane they'll give it a score so 9.8 and then they will put it in a nice plastic display case for you and basically seal it with that score on it it's all very very nice it's the same thing that you have for comic books and baseball cards those those kind of things yeah people people want they want a standard and they want consistent scoring and so what are aims to provide this so they got their the score, but they also then rate the quality of the cellophane packaging. So that's like A, A plus, A plus plus, I think is, is the best that you can get. So I think that example, the 2 million was a 9.8 slash A plus plus, which is yeah. basically as good as it's going to get. Yeah, It looks pristine. Now, if you send in your, your game, there's a there's a set fee that you pay water, and then you can pay them a bit more if you want it a bit faster. And then you can pay them a bit more if you want to jump the queue even higher. So sort of have a couple of levels of queue jumping, uh, which which goes against every fibre of my British person. But um, oh, queue, queue jumping. Yeah. But another issue that you get is that the fees they publish are for games that are expected it to be valued at under a thousand dollars. Right. If your game is worth more than a thousand dollars, then they'll start charging a scaling fee on top of that. Up That's to the percentage. point. Yeah, it does get up to 2% for the more expensive games. So, so hold the phone. So if if that Super Mario game sold for $2 million... Well, they won't have made 2% two, of $2, $2 million, but what they'll do is they'll assess the value. If you now send in a copy of Super Mario that's mint, they'll look at the pricing history and they'll say, OK, well, we think it's worth this, and therefore the fee that we're going to charge you is 2%. So it costs... I mean, it costs a lot of money anyway to get the game in the, in the water cases. Uh, and a lot of people are are getting this done and then trying to sell them on eBay. But, of course, then the price has to cover the water fees and all the rest of it. So you're already into hundreds of dollars yeah. on even a very ordinary title because they've had to pay these fees. But how else do you do it? You know, you've got to have somebody who's providing a grade, a consistent score, if it is consistent. Yeah, and there's a problem with that. It doesn't always seem to be consistent. And the reason for that is because humans are involved and humans aren't consistent. There's a degree of subjectivity to this, and there is, and, and some would claim more than that that something else, something nefarious is going on. In fact, some are claiming that the market is being manipulated by a few individuals. Yes. So we're going to be very cautious about how we we present this this story to you today because we don't want to get sued. A YouTuber by the name of Carl Jobs he released a, a video about this, and. Uh, it's worth watching, so we're going to link it in the description. So yeah. it's about an hour long. But, but it is um, worth watching. It is. It, it might actually make you angry, mm. so just be careful about that. Yeah. And Carl has done his research and everything else, but for us, we're going to talk in hypotheticals. Why don't we 
talk about it from if we wanted to do something like this? Yeah, so suppose that we're sat there one day, Pete, thinking, do you know what? We'd like to make an awful lot of money off of video games. Mm -hmm. How do we go about that? Well, we'd probably start by making sure we've got plenty of stock ourselves before the price increases. If there was some evidence of collusion or, or manipulation or something, then there would probably be somebody out there buying up large quantities of boxed, sealed games. Yeah, that, that would be, be mm. the case, because if you knew you were going to do that, you'd want to make sure you had them first. Yeah, and other people in the general yeah, you know, retro gaming collectible sphere would have noticed that that was happening and would be reporting on it on many web forums. Uh, obviously, we're talking hypotheticals. We can't say whether that has or hasn't happened. No, but it is a tight-knit community, so if it were to happen, you would expect them to pick up on it. You certainly would. Yeah. Suppose we got a we got a whole bunch of these games, right? So next thing we need to do... There is a grading company out there already. Yeah, isn't it? VGA. Yeah. Yeah. But um, we're not in control of that. So what we're going to do is start a new grading company. Hypothetically. Hypothetically, we'll find somebody to front it for us. We'll let it gather a small amount of momentum. And then what we'll do is maybe grade one of our own games. Say a copy of Super Mario Brothers or something like that, just for example. Say yeah, okay. Something, something we've got. Mm. Yeah. And um, what we then do is, so we've got it graded and it's, it's got a, a, a perfect grade and looks good and all the rest of it. So what we need, next need to do is put it up for auction. Mm. So what would be really helpful here to us is if we own the auction house that puts it up for auction. Oh, okay. Okay, so hypothetically, mm. we set up our own auction house or mm. if we happen to have one already, mm. we might use that. Um, and then we'd sell our own game through our own auction house. Yeah. And to make sure that it gets a good price, what we could do is buy our own game. Uh, let's say let's say we do that anyway. So we're going to buy our own copy of Super Mario, and we're going to pay, let's hypothetically say, a hundred thousand dollars for it. Or it might be pounds because if we were doing this, we it would might be a pounds. Be. Right? So let's yeah, let's, yeah, let's, yeah, let's pounds, say hundred. Because obviously this pounds. is hypothetical, so obviously. you know it would be in this country, mm. and and obviously we would we would buy that in. Good old sterling. So 100,000 imperial credits of the realm. And next, what we'll then do is we'll start a bit of a PR offensive. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. What to say about how much this game's fetched. Yeah, absolutely. And we're going to call in uh, experts from the grading company. The ones with lots of experience. Y yes, from the grading company that we helped... Hypothetically. Hypothetically helped to start. Right, OK. We'll, we'll get those guys in, and what they'll do is they'll talk about how the market for used games is ready to explode. It's massively undervalued, and it, it's only a matter of time before we're going to see a, a $1 million pound. Mm. So presumably that's so that you know genuine game collectors out there who've been doing it for years can, can see, the, see the, the value of this and get get the games they've cherished to make sure they've got them in their collection. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's all about the genuine fans. Yeah. But also as a side benefit to that, which is obviously not our focus whatsoever, as a side benefit to that, all sorts of people who like making money uh, might sort of notice the waving flag of, oh, look, stuff here is going up in value very quickly. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But, yeah. I can see that being a very much a side benefit to our altruistic hypothetical venture. If this, if this carries on much longer, we're going to have to rename the podcast to "The Constant Sarcasm." <laughs> but I, I think we need to we need to keep keep going on, okay. on this one. Okay, <laughs> we've got the sale, we've got the hundred thousand, and everyone's reeling from this. How could it possibly be worth this much money? And uh, now we've got the the PR publicity stunt doing its thing, and the auction house itself. We could get that to do some publicity. You know, we've sold this this video game, and the auction experts can talk about. Uh, how they, they've got more available. Um, sorry, I can talk about how, how it was worth the money and mm. uh, prices are going up and that they've mm. got more available. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'll I tell you what, though. Mm. What we would probably want to do as well is, you know, get some kind of entertainment mm. show involved. Well, like to... maybe a, a tie-in with a TV show? Yeah, that's what I'm sort of thinking. You know, someone who's perhaps finding things mm. and then working out what those things might cost by calling in some kind of expert. Mm. Yeah. Hypothetically, who could we use for that? Well, we could then use one of the experts at the grading company. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, because they, they know what they're talking about, mm. don't they? And they're, all, they're only there for grading. Mm. And if the customer who's having their thing assessed by the expert on the TV happens to know the expert and be part of the same group of people, 
that won't show on the TV, so that'll be okay, hypothetically speaking. Well, yeah, you, you wouldn't want there to be any suggestion that it was any, any kind of way, any kind of collusion going on. So uh, hopefully you get the gist of, of what we're suggesting here, and uh, if, you want, if you want the more <laughs> direct go watch, uh, version... Go and watch the, uh, the video. Mm. It's not just Carl's video we've watched, by the way. I mean, you have done plenty of our own research on this mm. to, to verify. Is this kind of thing really going on? Could it be the case that a small number of people can manipulate a global market in this way? Yes. Mm. Yeah, that, yeah. Is, that is the answer. People... It, it can be done. It's happened before. There's been a number of bubbles. It's the thing is, amongst all the the, the internet hubbub of noise these days, there are certain places where you can check for fact. In the UK, we have Companies House where you can check uh, limited company information uh, and filings. And in in the US, I believe it's the SEC mm. has a similar function in in, in certain areas. So you, you can look and see hard facts there. Uh, aside from all the noise and the 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 pure coincidences that may be going on. Lots of people now trying to cash in on eBay, of course, because they, they see this, so they think every grotty video game in their collection is now worth thousands. And so the prices for video games just, just rocket. nonsense. It really is crazy. The other day, you know, we've been doing some renovation work at our, our house. I think you mentioned it once, yeah. So I was pulling off some skirting board, and I found a copy of a Game Boy game that had slipped under. Really? Yeah, under the skirting board. So it was behind the skirting board in the wall. Wow. That's pretty cool. Uh, it, uh, so I'm, you know, I could be rich. What was it? Nintendogs. <laughs> <laughs> so if anybody wants a copy of Nintendogs. It's, then... it's yours for £20,000. Yeah. Um, I'll send it to Wata and we'll get it. We'll get it sorted out. It's not just eBay, though, is it? It's game dealers. Game dealers, yeah. yeah. So there was the example of crazy price prices being charged for what were fundamentally rubbish games. Uh, the, the one that made me chuckle the most was the 9.8 for Atari's version of E.T., which is has been voted the worst game in history. In actual fact, they went into landfill, didn't they? They, they literally took a truck. Dug a hole in the ground. Dump them in there. I'm sure I've seen that going for north of ten thousand. I I don't understand. If you want to buy, if you want to spend ten thousand pounds on a really bad game, I can probably code you one in an afternoon. They don't want the game, do they? They just want the box. We'll make you a box, wrap it in cellophane, and uh... actually, that's a really interesting point. Could you? How would you know mm. if there wasn't a cartridge in it? Just put a lump of plastic in it to get the weight right. Wow. And wrap it in cellophane. Oh, dear. Well, that's... Mm. <laughs> the plot could thicken. It gets even worse, though, I'm afraid, folks, uh, because now there's these companies popping up who are selling shares in video games. Oh, God. So they'll buy a game, and then you, you can have a share of that game. So a couple of examples that I've seen them advertising. A 9.8 A-grade seal copy of Halo for okay. the original Xbox. Yeah. And uh, that sold for three hundred and one thousand pounds, thousand dollars, 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 three hundred one thousand dollars for a copy of Halo. I can almost understand, you know, a game from the nineteen eighties, yeah, uh, fetching fetching money if it's mint and in box. But how old is is that? Well, here's another example. That same company is now selling shares in a nine point eight A plus plus rated, yeah, two thousand twelve Xbox three sixty copy of. Minecraft. What? Minecraft. What? Possibly the most produced game of the last decade. I mean, it's everywhere. So you can't imagine that there's a shortage of copies of Minecraft for the Xbox 360 that are st still in their box and still sealed. I'm flabbergasted. And they're selling shares in this. So $1 a share, and they're issuing 27,800 shares. So that's what they think it's worth. $27,800 for a 10-year-old copy of Can Minecraft. I just say your maths is excellent to be able to do that on the fly? What's going to happen? Well, the people who started things off are going to make a truckload of money. They're going to make mm. a fortune. And along the way, people are jumping on the bandwagon and they will make big profits. And there are going to be some genuine game collectors out there who choose to sell their games and they're free to do so. Uh, and for which this is going to be a life-changing amount of money if mm. they sell it. So that that's great. But 
with all bubbles, there comes a point where it pops. And at that point, the prices will crash back down to sensible levels. Um, of course, we don't know what sensible levels are now because hypothetically, if we were doing this, we'd probably get rid of any independent websites that give you the normal price for a game, hypothetically, wouldn't we? <coughs> we'd, we'd buy those and shut those down, hypothetically. <laughs> hypothetically. Um, yeah. So, But the, the prices will drop. And what will happen is the people that invested last will be left holding the can. So they're going to put in, you know, two million, three million pounds for a couple of dollars for a copy of Mario or whatever it might be, the price is going to crash and they're going to end up with a sealed box that's worth nothing or very little compared to what it was worth. They're going to lose their money. That's it. And there's a key point here, and that is that the market is being controlled. These things are not as rare as they're being made out to be. You know, quite a few of these Super Mario Brothers games have gone to auction and not all of them have done this well. There's quite a variety of pricing, actually. Hmm. Something my dad said to me many years ago, and it's kind of stuck with me, is that if one person is making massive gains, many others have to lose. That's very true. Greed is the root of all sorts of problems, and it's ruining it for many. It is. Thanks for watching this podcast snippet taken from Season 3, Episode 1 of the Constant Geekery Podcast. And uh, if you enjoyed it, uh, why not improve your YouTube algorithm by hitting the like button and maybe consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, and indeed, there's also more content on our main channel, uh, links in the description. And if you'd like to watch the longer form of the podcast, there's a link to that in the description as well. If you enjoy listening to two sort of middle-aged, spreading men waffle for a long time. It's quite good for insomnia, I'm told. <laughs>